What is up, everybody? How's everyone doing out there today? Welcome back to Wildcat MTG. And uh, today, we're going to open up a Commander Legends Dungeons & Dragons Battle for Baldur's Gate collector box. Um, it has been a hot minute since I've opened up one of these as a collector box. I did just open uh, recently a uh, draft box of, of Baldur's Gate. And... Um, I actually think that there's some surprisingly good value out of the Baldur's Gate set in general. But it had been a while since I revisited a collector box, so I want to do one of these today. Uh, at present time, these going for about 170 And for a long time, it was mostly just uh, dragons and lands, right? Dragons and lands is the, the crowd lands and, of course, the legendary dragons. Um, plus a few extras in there. But now I think there's a little bit more than that. The lands are, of course, still going up in value, which is one thing. That's going to create a higher floor. The dragons are still holding good value, but I also think there's some additional singles that are that are also going up in value. But uh, anyways, enough of that. Why don't we go ahead and dive on in and uh, let's crack some packs. See what kind of fun stuff we can pull today. So uh, as I did mention, uh, at present time, these boxes are sitting about 170 um, That is trending upward. A lot of Magic product is trending upward right now, but that is trending upward. Um, these have been as low as like 130 at one point. I think they kind of bottomed at 130. A lot of the time they sat at about 150, 155. They got down to 135 and, and they have begun going back up again. Um, of course, when they came out, you know, being kind of marketed as a uh, Commander Legends product and a collector box, the price tag on them was huge initially. I think upwards of $300, at least 250 for a collector box. And, uh, you know, kind of left, ooh, wait, hey, good good uncommon right off the bat is Irenicus Vile Duplication. As a foil uncommon, I think the, the price has dropped on this. I think they were like five, six bucks, probably around closer to three now. But still a, a decent quality uncommon there. Okay, so we'll get into the good stuff here. So there's our foil land. We've got a Marching Duo Drone. Candlekeep Sage. Ganax Astro Hunter as the foil etch. Not a lot of value in the foil etched in this product. Um, I think Karlak is, and which is a mythic, is the only foil etch that's carrying any substantial value. There are some that are like three, four dollars, but nothing that's above double digits. But we do have a mythic here. What is this? It is a pack foil Mystic Genesis. Not one of the big hitters as far as the mythics are concerned. It's a card that I've thought about using and I just never find it. I'm like, eh, eight mana. I don't know. Uh, but it is a mythic nonetheless. So, okay. And next up, we have a Venture Forth as an Extended Art. A Raven Loft Adventurer, Extended Art. Shadow Heart Dark Justice. As I mentioned, none of the uh, none of the the uh, Etch Foils are carrying any substantial value other than Carlac. A Glunch the Bestower. And a G Gale Water Deep Prodigy, which is pretty not great as a... <laughs> as a rare, at least it wasn't Volo. I was like, eh, please don't burn a, myth a mythic on Volo in that showcase art. That's another thing is like, obviously there's a lot of the, the showcase art. There's like three variations of like every card. Borderless, showcase, and of course the regular. And uh, people don't really like the showcase art, that rule, that rule book art. I, I, I'm fine with it. I like it, but I know it's I definitely not everyone's favorite. So in fact, most of those cards are less valuable than than the base copies in those uh, extended or excuse me in those showcase arts okay here we go got a shadow arch druid street urchin master chef as the etch foil rare is a send from avernus as a pack foil rare and oh mythic it is a clan crafter so this is a one of the uh, backgrounds some of the one of the couple of the backgrounds are do have some value i don't think clan crafter is one of them unfortunately but it is a mythic what we really want to see here is what i honestly what i want to be populating this top with is, is dragons if i can and uh, mythic dragons and uh, as many lands as possible because we have seen substantial increase in in the lands but it is a mythic another ascent from avernus this time in the extended art because why not Alundo, the seer in the etch foil, as a rare. Babala Saga and the uh, showcase version, the rulebook art. Hey, Basilisk Collar, neat. So a extended art foil Basilisk Collar. It also just got a, uh, like a reprint in the Fallout collector boxes, which has dog meat. I think those are going to be a little bit uh, probably more sought after, but I think Collar might still be over $3. I'm going to throw it on top. It's at the very least a very playable rare, so can't be upset about that. What am I doing with this token? What did I do with the other one? There we go. Okay, so two packs in, two mythics, neither one of them anything to write home about. No lands thus far, and of course we have ourselves a Basilisk Collar. Uh, what we are chasing, I mentioned the Mythic Dragons. Ancient Copper is still at the top. 
Uh, all three versions of those are well over $50. Uh, usually in like the $60 range or if you get like a borderless, I think the borderless is like 85 or something like that. Uh, then after that, I think the Brass Dragon and Silver Dragon are kind of up next. All right, Lightning Bolt in the Foil Showcase, which is always neat. Mahati, Emporium Master. You get a lot of legends out of these uh, out of these boxes. All right, Fey, Wild Visitor in the Edge Foil, sure. Cultist of the Absolute in the, uh, as a pack foil, as a background. Uh, what am I doing here? What did I do with that pile? Sure, I don't know. Throw that right there. Uh, Nalfashi, Nalfashni as an extender. I think this card was trending upward at one point. I don't, doesn't quite resonate with me as being one over $3, but I could be wrong. But if I myth it, what have gone on? <laughs> D- Double Miss Math Majestic Genesis. Uh, yeah, it's not exactly where we want to be. Okay, that is a extended art Majestic Genesis. Why not? Yeah, going to need some help here at this point, at this rate. Uh, popular Entertainer as a rare etched foil. Mythic, Legion Loyalty. Okay, cool. Uh, the borderless version of Legion Loyalty is probably just around $3. It is not also a big hitter, unfortunately. It is a cool card, but it's really expensive uh, mana value-wise. So doesn't uh, see like tons of play. It is obviously very good. But uh, yeah, it's probably 3 to 5 bucks for the uh, the borderless non-foil version. And then we conclude. Hey, all right. There's at least a solid hit from the rares. There are some good rares in this set, believe it or not, aside from the lands. Um, and, uh, this is definitely one of them. Extended Art, Foil, Monster Manual. And, uh, Monster Manual did get a, quite an, anyway, Boo Token, neat. Uh, a, a, quite an increase. It did start seeing, a, like, when the, the dinosaurs became a thing again, uh, during, uh, Lost Caverns, this saw a huge uptick as well, because people wanted to be able to cheat out dinosaurs. And, uh, yeah, it's still a good card. I think the Extended Art Foil is probably holding it around $10 or so. So that is a quality hit. We'll take that. We'll definitely take that. I kind of actually needed it. <laughs> uh, other good ex- uh, uh, f- um, rares, excuse me, I can talk. Another cup of coffee. Uh, Displacer Beast Kitten is a good one. Uh, Archivist of Agma is another good one, as far as just rares are concerned. You know what? There's a couple of them. There we go. All right. Here we go. Alora, Merry Thief, and that showcase. All right. Candlekeep Researcher. Vaconia, and the etched foil treatment. There we go, nice. So we've got ourselves a pack foil. First of the lands for this box, we've got ourselves a pack foil Sea of Clouds. I think the base copy of Sea of Clouds is right around $6. So the, the foil version is gonna be roughly the same, probably in that six, $7, you know, maybe five to $7 range, somewhere right in the middle. But uh, I will take any and all the crowd lands, lots of them taking up. All right, Brand Stealer Dragon. Hey, Extended Art Brand Stealer Dragon. This is a card that does have a little bit of price tag to it. I want to say it's like five to six bucks. Um, and uh, it's a heck of a card. You can throw it in dragons or you can throw it in horrors. Um, I think the base copy of it comes in the Nagat Rod Commander deck. And uh, it is uh, it does some stuff. So big old dragon, and it's a super, super cool art. does have some value. <laughs> All right, if we're going to get duplication, lands is the kind of duplication I am 100% here for. So there is an extended art Sea of Clouds. Again, probably in that roughly $7 range for the non-foil copy would be my guess. Uh, but I will absolutely take the lands. It's one of the reasons I wanted to open this. And then we have a Mythic. It's, yeah, I should, I think I, I just summoned him, unfortunately. So we have an etched foil Volo Itinerant Scholar. Uh, there is plenty of Womp Womp Mythics. I've actually mentioned the Dragons. There's Tear Battle, uh, Battle Angels of Tear. There are some good Mythics, Karlak, but there is also plenty of, of Woof down at the bottom. And Volo certainly falls in that, in that uh, category. Uh, if you were going to get a etched foil Mythic, you would want it to be Karlak. But, all right, so it is a Mythic. Sure, why not? Raga Draga in the Showcase. Uh-huh. And we conclude with uh, Dina here, uh, the adept. Uh, yeah, all right, kind of a kind of a whiff there. Actually, I guess we got two sea of clouds, so you know, not all bad. But we have we have uh, largely whiff in the mythic category thus far. <clears throat> all right, we are. This is pack number five, so we're still not we're still in our first half of the box. Okay. There are some cool stuff that we can get um, that are like commander deck stuff, like delayed blast fireball, uh, black market connections. There's some stuff. All right, Minthara, merciless soul. Love the experience counter thing. Criminal past. 
another candle keep researcher you get lots of legends in these collector boxes hey nice pack foil morphic pool let's go uh, morphic pool is definitely i think it's uh, the most valuable land still and i want to say that the base copy of morphic pool was probably in the 12 to 13 dollar region uh, so again i would probably say the same is going to be true of the uh the pack foil is just the regular version being about 12 13 bucks so this is probably right around 13 14 dollars but uh yeah great most valuable land there is and it is another one of those lands we will take it grill philosopher in the extended art hey archivist of agma nice so uh this used to be a super super valuable card like probably when it came out it was like 15 to 20 dollars uh, it's come back down. It is probably still in the six to seven dollar range for the extended art, but that is a, a still a quality hit. I mean, it is adding value to to what we pulled. Uh, not upset about that. Good card. After that, we have a Astari on the deck, and Astarian did have a little uptick at one point and it got up to like four four or five bucks, and I unloaded a bunch of them. Uh, it's come back down. Jahira, the base copy of Jahira, I think is like $6. Again, nobody likes the showcase and people don't really love the etch foils. So I think the showcase Jahira is probably in the neighborhood of like 3 to $4. Uh, but hey, it's still value. We'll take it. Conclude with a call to the void as an extended art foil. Nothing to write home there. About there. I'll throw that there. Okay, but not bad. We're, we're I feel like at least with the Crowdlands, we've got some momentum. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, and, and again, I know $170 for a box uh, of Magic cards is not, that's not nothing, right? But um, in, in terms of the collector box investment, it's, that's pretty, pretty moderately priced still. And the fact that we, you have a good, I would say like uh, base value, if you're going to get three to five lands, I mean, and they're all going to be in the, you know, right around the $10 region, that does give you some, some good base value, a, a good floor, I guess, is what I would say. All right. Here we go. Goggles of night. The goggles do not sing. Wilson. Wilson! Tavern Brawler. Descent into Avernus. I think Descent is, like, it, it floats right around that $3, that $3 price tag. I, I, I'm going to put it up top. I might be wrong about it, but I think this kind of hovers right in that range. So Descent to Avernus is actually a pretty decent card. Value or not. Oh, hey, there's a hit. Nice. So it has seen a, a, a reprint since, but Black Market Connections is still, especially, again, uh, I think you can only get them out of the collector boxes. I don't know that you can, I can't remember if you can get them out of the set boxes. I wouldn't even bother. The set boxes are pretty atrocious. Uh, but Black, Art, Black Market Connections in the extended art um, is still like pushing $20. Uh, even after it got another reprint, it is a very good card. Uh, you guys can pause and read it, and uh, that is huge. That is a really strong pull for us. This is the kind of card you want to pull when you're opening these collector boxes because, again, you can't get them in the draft boxes. I can't. I don't remember if you can get them in the set boxes, but there you go. And another Morphic Pool. Excellent. This is the kind of duplication. I've said this already. This is the kind of duplication I'm here for. So Morphic Pool and the Extended Art uh, probably carrying a little bit more value too. So it's probably in the range of $15, $16, a couple bucks more than the base copy, um, and uh, that is huge for us. So back-to-back -back polls where we got to, let's call it, I'm going to cheat up and, and call black market 20. It's probably like 18. Um, and the morphic pool in the, in the 15 range, that's a, that's a really strong pack for us. Bane, Lord of Darkness in that etch foil. Bane, Lord of Darkness in the showcase version, because why not? And a John Irenicus. Ooh, it's a good thing we got those cards in the middle of the pack because the end was unkind. A lot of legends. That's kind of it's it's both the, the good and bad of opening these these packs. So we're on the second half of the box now. It's actually still all, all things considered, and despite really missing on basically all the mythics so far, uh, the fact that we've gotten four of the lands and two of the otherwise really good pulls, I think bodes well for us. But uh, overall, a solid first half of the box. A lot of legends in these boxes. It's 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 both good and bad. There are, by the way, commons and uncommons between the gates and some of the other things that do also carry some value. I don't really look at that as much as far as like box value. Like I do take into consider the commons and, and uncommons, but I'm like my, my philosophy is generally if between the mythics and the rares that are over three dollars, if you can get eighty percent of your your box value back in just those, the remaining twenty percent tend to get made up by the one to three dollar commons and uncommons and rares. All right, here we go. Gut, true soul zealot. Soul zealot. Actually, gut's pretty good. Really strong for an uncommon. Flaming fist. Shadow archdruid. 
And a Dinah Hare, Invoker Adept. Again, a lot of legends. Mocking Doppelganger. Doppelganger! And the extended art. Hey, there's another solid hit. Excellent. Displacer Kitten. Very, very nice. Uh, I want to say Displacer Kitten's probably in the neighborhood of like 12 to 13. I could be a little bit off on that, but I think Extended Art Kitten is, is probably still in that range still. So really, really good. Uh, very strong. And what's funny is it's, this card is very good, right? We just said that. Uh, people looked at this card when this set was being printed and, and was being released and, and said this card should be like a pre band and What's funny is I think I hardly ever actually run into this, and I'm not sure if that's because you either have to build around it to make it busted or it's too busted that it just doesn't make most casual decks. I don't know, but it is a good card. So... Uh, between the Black Market Connections, the Monster Manual, and the Kitten, I feel very good about those pulls as rares. All right, Ragadraga. Nine fingers keen in the showcase. Oh, nice! There we go. So we got a Borderless Foil Ancient Brass Dragon. Of the dragons, this is the lesser of the dragons, and that's okay. But honestly, these are still so rare to get a Borderless Foil Dragon that any of them have value. Even, you know, even this one. It does some stuff, right? It's it's not a nothing card. It is still quite good. Uh, I want to say this is probably in the neighborhood of like 24, 25 bucks. Uh, and again, that's the lesser of the dragons. I think the copper, the ancient copper borderless foil is like I think 130. Brass and silver are probably in the 50, 50, 60 dollar range. Uh, and then uh, the gold is probably in like the 30 dollar range. So, you know, this is a modest 20, 25 dollars. Uh, but huge. Uh, a, a mythic we needed because we were getting pretty smushed in the mythics. So a borderless foil uh, dragon is, no matter which color, is awesome. All right. There we go. So, not bad. Between four lands, now we've got ourselves a borderless foil dragon, ancient brass dragon, a extended art kit and a black market connections, and an extended art foil uh, monster manual, along with a, a bunch of other like $3, 4 $5 cards. This box is definitely looking up. All right. Inspiring leader. Sure. Guild artisan in the etch foil. Mythic. Hey, it's Balor. Neat. So Balor is probably in like the four, three to four dollar range, I think. Uh, this is a pack foil mythic. So this does give us another. By the way, this does put us, put us at seven mythics, which is not inconsequential. So I think Balor's in that like three, four, maybe five dollar range, but it's, I think like three to four. Uh, solid. And a Baloth. A Baloth, excuse me, Barrel Entertainer. I can't remember. I feel like he's probably carrying some value. I don't remember this one offhand. I'm going to take a wild guess, like in like the $5, $6 range. I could be way off on that in either direction. It could be like a $2 card. It could be like a $10 card. So I'm just going to hedge and stay in the middle. But I do think this had value at one point. All right, it is another Mythic, by the way. That's a uh, Commander Mythic, Commander Deck Mythic. Elder Brain in the Extended Art. Merkel, Lord of Bones in the Etch Foiled. And a, woo, borderless Minskin Boo. Nice. So Minskin Boo at one point like spiked really, really aggressively and uh, was way up. And then it kind of came back down to earth. And, you know, the now the borderless Minskin Boo is probably under $10. We're probably talking in that like $8, $9 range, um, somewhere around that neighborhood. But still a good card. And uh, this card is is really good. Like it's actually pretty strong. So I'm not unhappy about that. Borderless, borderless Minskin Boo. And after, oh, nice. There we go. That is uh, that is good. That is really good. So Bountiful Promenade is is one of the, uh, of course, the crowd lands. And the base copy of Promenade is probably pushing 10. So I'm going to guess the extended art foil is, I don't know. Uh, it could be in like the $15 range. Um, I would not be surprised if, if that were the case. So that is also another really good pull. And that does bring us to five lands as well. Uh, I will absolutely take seeing lands in that last slot. Extended art foil lands uh, opposed to the uh, showcase legends any day so there we go I don't, I don't feel like i want to cover up the dragon i'm gonna put minskin boot there cool four packs left and now i feel like we actually have like almost regardless of what happens in the last four packs like obviously if we get shut out and just don't pull anything for the last four that feels pretty bad but overall i feel like we're gonna at least have a solid box and on the cusp of having a a you know above average to even a very good box depending all right got ourselves a sky diamond Corless of the Scale Slinger. Lulu, Loyal Holophant as the Edge Foil. Rare is an Intellect Devourer. Nom, nom, nom. Uh, what's I doing? Oh, yeah, it just makes up that pile. That's what it is. Okay. Sure. 
Hey, Bothersome Quasit. You know what? I actually believe this card as an extended art also has some value. Uh, goaded creatures can't, opponents can't block. When you cast a non, non-creature non spell, goad target creature and opponent controls. Pretty good, pretty good creature. Quasit might be in the 5 to $6 range, in fact. So I'm going to put that up top. Uh, I feel pretty confident in saying it's at least above 3 to 4. So that's excellent. Horn of Valhalla does not resonate like it's a good card like it is a good card i can't remember if this is i feel like it floats around that two to three dollar range i'm gonna throw it on the bottom and i might be wrong but it's still a playable card to say the least all right shameless charlatan as the edge foil miram a really strong commander card uh really good dragon commander um, but of course none of the uh none of a lot of the legends aren't carrying value there's just so many of them but this is kind of the best of them and then we conclude with a Glunch the Bestower as a foil showcase. All right. Well, whatever. Quasit's good. <laughs> Three packs left. Imagine if we can pull one more dragon. We can, like, not even necessarily like a borderless, right? Like, if we pull a brass or, or a silver, right? It doesn't even have to be a copper. Although, I would not turn that away. Okay. Imuin, Mystic Trickster. Emerald Archdruid. Scion of Halister in the Etched Foil. Rare is a Shadowheart Dark Justicer. Pack Foil version. Astral Dragon. Hey, not bad. I think Astral Dragon is, again, one of those cards that probably is in like the $5 to $6 range, if, if memory serves. Um, again, I feel pretty confident it's at least above 3 so I'm going to put it up top. And yeah, that is also a, a very good card. It's a little, obviously a little expensive on the mana value side, but the amount of power toughness that it actually adds to the battlefield when it ETBs is really strong uh also then makes i think for a good blink <laughs> a good blink target the mighty servant of luko as the extended art jan jansen chaos crafter in the etched foil treatment zevlor in the showcase and conclude with uh storm king's thunder all right so we did get another we got an extended art foil mythic it is storm king's thunder not going to be one of the chase mythics probably just a handful of dollars maybe like in the three four dollar range for the extended art foil um, but it is another mythic and it is extended art. It's actually a card I like. I just doesn't, it, it very, it belongs in a very specific type of deck, right? All right. Two packs left. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can finish strong here. Corlesa, the scale slinger. Master chef. Criminal past in the edge foil treatment. Rare is a Lazelle's Acrobatics. Um, I can't remember it. Don't think it's above three. Seasoned Dungeoneer, uh, I believe, is also, in, in the, as an extended art, non-foil, um, does carry some value. Probably in, like, again, like $3 to $5 range is kind of what, if I recall correctly. Um, pretty good card. Will's Reversal, which is actually also a pretty good card. Not, not super valuable, but a, a very playable card. Gory on the Wise Mentor as the etched foil treatment. Duke Older Raven Guard in the showcase. And a Fearbolg Flutist. Uh, extended art foil. I feel like I pull one of those in literally every box. Like extended art or extended art foil, pack foil. I have pulled and opened so many of those. All right, last pack. Okay, start off with a little swamp. Taunting Kobold. Cloakwood Hermit. Come on. We've got Commander Liara in the Etch Foil Treatment. Miram, this time in the Pack Foil Treatment. Sure, why not? Rare is a spectacular showdown. Uh, wow, that's not bad. Can't remember if this has value. It doesn't resonate with me, but... It actually seems like a decently strong card. I could be wrong on this one. So, all right. That's cool. Spectacular showdown. Barroom Brawl in the extended art. <laughs> Triple Miram. Hey, you know what? If you were going to get one of them, there's, and in fact, at one point, this actually did carry some value. But again, there's just so many. The legends are so so bountiful that it's they just don't carry any value. Pull so many of them. Alondo. 
finish with a Astarion's Thirst in the Extended Art Foil. Actually, did carry a little bit of value at one point, but not so much. Okay, well, let's talk about it. So, I don't even think we particularly killed it in the Mythics, right? Like, I don't mean to besmirch the Borderless Foil Bronze Dragon. It's quite good, and that is... But, like, there were... Look at the, the the right side of this. Like we don't even I don't even think we killed it in the mythics, and I still think this is gonna end up being a good box. We did get, however, five of the of the lands, including extended art foil promenade, extended art mythic, uh, excuse me, morphic pool, pack foil morphic pool, and then extended art sea of clouds, and then a pack foil sea of clouds. From the high end rares, black market connections is a huge pull. That's like one of the reasons you would want to open this product is to be able to get your your uh, be able to get one of those. Extended art kitten is good. Extended art foil monster manual, and then again, just in that three. Three to five, six dollar range, a, a ton of cards, adding extra value to it. So, like, I don't even think this box is like a anything close to a god box. I think this is a really, a, it's a good box to an above average box, but it's not like a killer box, right? It's not an ancient copper dragon or something along those lines. Ancient brass dragons, ancient silver dragons. So, I do think this is a reflection of of why this product is good. Even like I think at one seventy, I think these boxes are eventually going to make their way over two hundred. They just, you know, we just haven't quite caught up yet. So. Uh, that's going to do it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button for me. Hit the like button for me. And by all means, drop me some comments. Appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much, everybody. And be well.